Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. Thank you for the brilliant and astonishingly comprehensive YouTube.com slash how to vote in every state. After seeing it, I went on Twitter and asked eligible American voters who don't intend to vote what their reasoning was, and today I want to respond to the six concerns I heard the most. Number one, by far, I do not want to choose between the lesser of two evils. Two things. First, in most states there will be more than two candidates on the presidential ballot. Secondly, I think maybe you do want to choose between the lesser of two evils. You know, because it's the less evil choice. By not voting, you're essentially ranking the candidates as evil equally evil, which I think is technically impossible given their vastly different policy positions. Also, you're not just voting for president. I know it might feel that way because of national media coverage, but the elections down the ballot are extremely important. It's not just your senators and U.S. Congress people, it's your state legislators who make the laws in your state, the school board members who decide what the curriculum is going to look like in your schools. Those elections have a massive effect on the community you live in. Okay, concern number two, I am not informed on the issues and or don't care. So if you don't care who your elected representatives are, we agree on this one. You should not vote. But it's not really that hard to get well informed. You can go to youtube.com slash how to vote in every state, find your state, find a sample ballot. Then you can go to the candidates' websites. Or if it's a race for U.S. Senate or Congress, there's a great website called Ballotopedia, link in the doobly-doo. And if you want us to make videos about candidates' policy plans and proposals, let us know in comments what topics you'd like for us to explore. Concern three, I'm a Republican in a blue state or a Democrat in a red state, so my vote doesn't matter. First, your down-ballot votes might matter, but I'd argue your vote matters regardless. Like, you're right that your vote isn't going to tip the election, but by not voting, you're making politicians in your state believe that their state is less politically diverse than it actually is. And I think that's dangerous because a strong minority has a moderating effect on the party in power, both at national and local levels, and God knows we could use some moderation. Concern four, the system is corrupted by money and votes don't actually matter. I agree that the system is corrupted by money, I just don't think we're going to fix it by not voting, because not voting out of protest looks to the system exactly the same as not voting out of apathy. Also, I don't think money negates the power of your vote, and I think rich people know this, actually. Like, 57.5% of eligible American voters voted in the 2012 election, 99% of millionaires did. Literally. Number five, illness or disability or transportation problems. One of my many frustrations with U.S. voting laws is that in lots of states, it's really difficult to vote if you are sick or disabled. But find your state in the links below and check out your options. There usually are some. Also, if you need a ride on election day, most local political parties will pick you up and take you to the polls, even if you're not voting for their candidates. Okay, lastly, number six. I am overwhelmed with the process of registering and have never voted before and find this whole thing intensely scary. Yeah, I can relate. Like, 16 years ago, in August of 2000, I just moved to Chicago, but I didn't know where I technically lived. Like, I was sleeping in the walk-in closet of a Chicago apartment that my name wasn't on the lease of. But my driver's license said I lived with mom and dad back in Florida, where most of my stuff was. And it was a stressful and overwhelming time, and I had no idea how to register, and suddenly I looked up and the deadline had passed. It's true that the system makes it hard for people who move around a lot to vote, but I lacked the fortitude to stand up to that system, and it's one of the great shames of my life. I feel like I failed my community and myself, and also people who live far away from me who desperately want the opportunity that I took for granted. Of course, my vote wouldn't have changed the outcomes in any elections, but the combined votes of even 10% of the thousands of people who were like me that would have changed some outcomes. If you're eligible to vote in the United States, I'm asking you to become a registered and informed voter and to make your voice heard, even if it's hard. In fact, especially if it's hard. Hank, I'll see you on Friday.